Praise God. Rabbi Ron, I don't want to take any more of your time. Please come up here. Amen. I think we're going to be blessed this morning greatly. Give a hand of applause to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Okay, say hallelujah. Yes. You know, it just means to exemplify God. That's what it means. We extol the Lord in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And we're just extolling the Lord. We're celebrating Him. And that's what we're gathered to do is to celebrate Him. In the midst of our celebration, He just comes and visits each one of us personally and individually. Like you're the only person in the room. And he just begins to minister to you. And, and uh, I've been traveling a lot since my wife's passing last November. 61 years we, we had our life together. And, and she's my best friend. And she's with me everywhere I go. Now she... She gave me a, a commission uh, two days before she passed. She said, thank you for taking such good care of me all our lives. And now you're free, honey. Now go do what God's called us to do. Finish the race that we need to finish. And she had incurable terminal muscular dystrophy. Most of her life she couldn't walk or run and we couldn't walk together after so many years of our marriage. And so for the last five to six years, four years intrinsically, I took care of her, bathed her every day, took care of her, wouldn't even let the nursing or hospice people clean her or take care of her. I did that and, and God, and sometimes I didn't get out of the house for a week or two at a time other than going out the back door and taking the trash out and breathing a little bit and going back in. But you know what? I had the greatest life that any man could have on this earth. I did everything that I only had just to have just another day with her without pain. And she suffered for like 14 years with horrible pain. So I told her, talk to Job when you get there and say, hey buddy, you had nothing on me. <laughs> uh, I want to give you a word from the Lord, church. Are you ready for the harvest? Yes. Are you ready for the harvest? Yes. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this, y'all. Anytime, look around, talk around, look at your phone, and read. I'm, I'm telling you. Come on, brother. Are you ready for the harvest? Yes. Are you qualified for the harvest? Amen. Scripture said, and Paul wrote, they disqualified themselves. Mm. I had a vision years ago. I was standing south of Ruby Falls, up outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, on the side of a mountain, looking into a valley. And down in the valley were all patches of different... Uh, uh, you know, like you see the patch quilts. Well, this was all grain or wheat or barley or corn or something or uh, whatever the farmers were growing down there. But it, I'm telling you, it was just square patches everywhere, different colors, different varieties. And I stood there with a missionary friend of mine from Israel. And about a month later, the Lord took him uh, home. And I noticed that certain people were being taken home. And I said, Lord, these are valuable servants. He said, I need to take them home because they could stand in the way of this harvest. Mm. This harvest. And I stood there in this vision. I was there physically, but then the vision came. And all of a sudden, I saw red and yellow, black, white, brown, every color of nationality in the world and I saw patches of each one of them segregated around them and around and in the middle there was a like a golden glow and that's all but all these patches and as I stood there on the side of this mountain all of a sudden and I had to be facing north because I felt the warmness of the sun on my face on this side and all of a sudden as the sun son of god if you would but as the sun began to rise and settle on me i had my prayer shawl and i'm gonna do a blessing at the end to see the prayer shawl i had the prayer shawl on there was john mahoney from new iberia was standing here beside me he'd been to israel and to the mission field with me many years ago and then there was another young rabbi that had been disqualified 
who fell backwards and he's not even in ministry today and this is just and all of a sudden there was another one there and another one there and we were standing right on the edge of this of this field and as the sun began to come up on my side it was like the red and yellow black and white segregated patches all the patches begin to turn gold when the sun hit those patches when the sun hit those wheat fields the go the, the 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 wheat began to turn gold all the way across all these fields and the lord said my son i'm showing you the harvest you are qualified to go into the harvest and my feet were standing right there on the edge of the harvest and if you would just imagine you're standing it's a field it's not the cliff even though we were up there and you're standing and all of a sudden i step one of my feet into the harvest and into the harvest and i never realized as the november 19th last year i was on the road in december putting thousands and stuff last year i mean last month i put five thousand miles on my tundra preaching the gospel all over this country sometimes in churches sometimes in synagogues and sometimes i would take a weekend and like in alabama i took a weekend and went out and handed out tracts and found street people laying in the street some of them were vomiting they were cold they were naked and i had money in my wallet that people had given me one guy gave me a thousand dollars cash I had it in my pocket and I went up and gave 200 to this young man his name was Matthew that's my son's name who's in heaven with my wife he died earlier and so here we are and Matthew's there and I said Matthew God sent me to you he wept he returned to his family long story short and today he's serving God all I wanted to do was go to the streets and tell somebody about Yeshua I repented of my sins at two o'clock in the morning last week in my sleep I'm rededicating my life to God in my sleep and all of a sudden the power of the Holy Spirit fills me and renews me I get up and I'm wondering what in the world and all I'm saying is God I love you I love you, I love you. I love you. <laughs> But church, do you want to be qualified Hallelujah. for the harvest? So you, then I want you to listen to this message of exhortation to you because this is to the body of Messiah. And by the way, I wrote a, a, a pamphlet. It's called Door to Door. It's generation. Door to Door means generation to generation. And what it is is how to pray for your children oh. and your children's children. Amen. I wrote this and it gives up every prayer. To, I'll just give you a little example because I want to get into the Word, if you would. And it says here, uh, bless Blessings of uh, First Chronicles uh, 4, 9 through 7. Lord, I ask you, you would bless Benjamin and, and Joshua indeed. Put your hand upon him and enlarge his influence for good. Oh, Lord, that you would, you would, your hand would be with Benjamin and keep him all together today. For example, one other one here. Lord, let your salvation appear unto Benjamin that he may obtain eternal life and never depart from you, but continually grow in the grace and strength of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. You, and thank you, Lord, for saving my child, Benjamin. That's what this brochure is, and I've given permission to, to your wife, brother. If you run out, listen, if you just give me a donation, I don't care what it is, throw it in the box back here. It costs to print these, but I'm giving the church authority to print these and get them into as many hands as you can your family your grandparents and so on and so forth because if we fail to teach our children to pray we teach our children to fail yeah. but this is door to door and uh, I, I want to give that to you and uh, one other thing there's brochures of my ministry in Israel uh, and what we do is we feel we feed Holocaust survivors at risk kids uh, special needs children, anti-trafficking. Uh, I mean, my work in Israel is um, uh, is is amazing. I have I'm one of the only Messianic believers, and the Messi and the Knesset calls me Rabbi. By the way, it's unheard of. The, the, the Orthodox hate me. They despise, They spit on me. They throw things at me. But you see, I wasn't called to be loved. 
I was called to love. And I love my people. I want to see all of Israel saved. But listen to me. I'm not going to step over a Jew to win somebody else. I'm going to get that next person and that next person and that next person. This weekend, I've been part and partner with this prison ministry. They told me 90 people have were saved during this weekend. I, that's, nah, that's part of my harvest, y'all. Whether it's in the prison, the hospital, the streets, or here this morning. Yes. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you have an opportunity to meet the King of Glory today and stop fooling around and playing around in your hypocrisy. Get right with God and the Lord will save you today. If this God. is a brochure, they're back there. There's envelopes you can use if you want to write a check. You'll get It's a 501c3. Uh, and by the way, you can go online and become a mighty defender each month. You can do that. It's IsraelBenevolenceFund.org. That's the website. So uh, I want to make that available to you. Partner with us. I ask the church and your leaders if you would prayfully consider being a partner of IBF monthly and, and helping us. I absolutely take nothing from the ministry. I paid for my own gas to get here today. I paid for my own gas to go to San Antonio on Monday, uh, round trip to San Antonio to bury a, a, an officer that had passed away, a, a commander in the army, and I went and did his graveside and his funeral, paid my way, and I, I, I traveled so much I had to hire a lawn service to mow my yard. I said, I'm going to go out there and mow my yard myself. And you see that right there? Yeah, I did that too. So I got out there and mowed, and all of a sudden I went across a piece of paper in the yard. And I mowed across it, and I, and I looked back, and I thought maybe it was one of my tracks because I hand out million-dollar bills, and on the back of it it says, million-dollar question, are you going to spend eternity in hell or heaven? Hell you know? And I, I, I got tracks in Spanish. I got tracks in English. And I got them in Hebrew, and we're, I'm handing out tracks. I go to a gas station, and I say, I blame English, no, I blame English, I spend your. I said, no, I blame Espanol. Here, here's a track about Jesus, you know, and, and just keep going. But as I was mowing the yard, I went back, and guess what? It was a $100 bill. A $100 bill was in my front yard. I don't know where that $100 bill came from, but I know what? I put it in my tank of gas because I can get 20 cents cheaper for gas than using my credit card. I'm telling you. I don't take anything from the ministry. Uh, for many years, 100% of every dime that came into our ministry were 15 years old. The Israeli Knesset recognizes our ministry. Even though I'm Messianic, I can go into any orphanage, children orphanage in Israel right now. And I can go into Israel. They know that I believe in Jesus. They know that I'm Jewish. But you see, I'm from the Kohanim tribe that you were talking about, tribe of Aaron. And they recognize the Aaronson name in Israel as being sons of Aaron and in tradition you're not supposed to curse one of those guys because if they get angry with you and curse you you're in trouble with God but I don't believe that that's okay a little protection doesn't hurt once in a while and uh, the Aronson family was the uh, founders of the Mossad and I come out of special forces my children are special forces my uh, grandson Benjamin's a Navy SEAL so I mean we're, we're kind of exciting people you know but we don't throw knives and catch them so there you go <laughs> open your Bibles today if you would I want to uh, you, we were singing today uh, loving the Lord with all my heart you see I witnessed to a, a young Marine on my way from the prison all the way to New Iberia him and, his family, him and his wife have been married almost 16 years, and they're, they're, the devil's trying to tear up their, their family, Sarah and Joel. And Sarah and Joel are Jewish, and I, I let him, he, he grew up in the synagogue, and I bar mitzvahed him. I married him, I did the Marine wedding in San Diego and all of that stuff years ago. And the devil's trying to tear up their home, and she feels like she's 50% in and 50% out. I want to ask you something, church. How, what percentage are you in the Lord? What percentage does God have of your life? Wow. I've always heard marriage is 50 50, it's 100 100, or whatever. Let me tell you something eternity is 100 to zero. Either he has 100% or he has 
zero. He wants all of your heart. In Deuteronomy 6 and verse uh, 4, it says, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto Leolam Ba'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. And that Shema goes on and says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. All means all, y'all. <laughs> That's what it means. Amen. It doesn't mean partly. If you play between the cracks, it doesn't really sound very good. But if you hit the right keys, it's harmonious. We need to hit the eternal right keys and be harmonious with God. I, I'm just exhorting you today. This is not a, a chastening message. In the end times, it says that people will fall away from God. But in the end times, it also says those that are righteous will become more righteous and they will glorify God and they will follow God. And it will be intense, y'all. Yes. We'll give our lives sometimes for the gospel. Yes. As in the days of Noah was, so also it is today. Yes. But stop judging the world. Stop looking at the world. Look in your own heart. Yes. Don't look at the transvestites, the homosexuals, the lesbians, and all this. God's got that. What you need to do is let your light permeate your soul and darkness be gone from you, and that darkness will be attracted to you, and that light will show forth, and there's deliverance that will come, and these people will be saved like you. Hallelujah. The power of God and the salvation to those who believe. It's power. You want power? Then let that salvation power permeate you today. Let it just soak within you. I, I, I Listen, I got up the other day, uh, Pastor Matt, and, and I said, he's risen and I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Yes. Well, I went to the gas station and I was going to pump gas. And there was a guy there, and I said, hey, he's risen, I'm forgiven, what about you? Amen. I mean, I, I figured, hey, that's a good, that's yeah. a good approach. Yeah. It was fresh. Yeah. And he said, uh, 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 what are you talking about? And I was able to share with him. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, we have a, we're, we're, we're his witness. Yes. Who can declare this, says the Lord? You are my witnesses, saith the Lord. Yes. Who's going to do it? If you don't love God with all your heart. That's what this said. You know, in 1 Corinthians 12, we have all the gifts and the giftings and everything. And Paul writes to us and he says, but I show you a better way. You remember that? He said, has all spoken in tongues? No. Is all prophecy? No. Does all have healing? No. Does all have the interpretation? No. Does all prophesy? No. He said, not all. No. He said, but I show you a better way. And then he gave us 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter of his writings. And he begins to explain to you in detail, if you want to take the listeners test about love, there's a checklist right there. Come on, brother. Let me tell you. My wife had 100% of my heart. 100% of my life. 100% of my attention. And you know what? When the nurses would come into the room, they'd ask my wife, why? How did you get this man? Where did he come from? She'd say, hey, he ain't perfect. And she began and they'd share. But you know what she said? This was her witness about me. Come on, guys, you listen to this. He loves God more than he does me. Yes. You know, some women want their husbands to get saved enough so that they can kind of control their life. 
Uh -oh. They come home at night instead of going to the bar or they stop chasing skirts or they want to just get saved enough. But you know what? When men get really saved, some of them end up in the ministry. They sell the plantation and they go. Come on, brother. And then the women say, wait a minute. I don't want him to get that saved. Uh -huh. yeah. But listen, my wife took my hand when God called us into ministry in 1967. She took my hand and my little girl here and her holding my missy and we walked into a field that we had no idea what it was going to be. I left $80,000 a year at Masonite Corporation in Laurel, Mississippi to take a bankrupt group of people. In 1968, there was about 500 people saved and I was doing the Jesus Revolution and I was baptizing people and the waters in the baptistry were getting dirty and the deacons were mad because they said the pump was going to run dry and all of this, but hundreds of people were coming to faith in God. Little did I realize, and do you know what? We didn't have any health insurance. We didn't have anything. She hadn't graduated from Ole Miss. Yeah, she graduated from Ole Miss, and God forgave her. And so anyway, <laughs> but the thing about it is we didn't have anything. All we had was a call. And you know what happened? Doctors took care of us. Dentists took care of us. Lawyers were sending us money. People were giving us money. There was a man in, in Mobile, Alabama, and God told him, woke him up. He never heard of Ron Aronson in his life. And him and his great big Cadillac from Mobile, Alabama, drove into Waynesboro, Mississippi, and I come around the side of the church and walked up, and he said, are you Ron Aronson? I said, yes, sir. He says, here's this money. He said, God woke me up in the middle of the night, and he told me to come and give you this money. It paid for my taxes. It paid for all of my... Social Security and it bought my children school clothes for the next year. Hallelujah. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm telling you, I cannot do without because not only has God provided my needs, I was driving my car here today and God told me to pull into a gas station because I met a dark lady yesterday and she was the best cook. That chicken stuff smelled so good inside that place. I said, ma'am, you must be a good cook. I didn't stop to eat anything. I was looking for a root beer and a sack of peanuts. You know, pour them in the root beer and the goat. I wanted to have root beer and peanuts. They didn't have any peanuts. I said, well, I don't want the root beer. And she came. She was so kind to me. I was on my way here from Dr. Uh, Mahoney's and, and God said, go in there and give her a hundred dollars. I had a hundred dollars in my wallet. She went there. And the girl was there. I said, can I trust you? She said, yes, sir. I said, you know the, the lady, the cook? She said, yeah, she comes in at 2 o'clock. I said, here, give this to her. She said, I wrote on there, thank you for being kind, Ron. The peanut man. <laughs> I didn't plan that when I got up this morning. I didn't plan that. I didn't plan it after taking a shower and having coffee with Dr. and Jill. I just got in my tundra and was driving down the road and got to that intersection and God said, go in there and give her a hug. I don't know why. I don't care why. That isn't my responsibility. I don't know what she'll do with it. I know she needs it because God spoke to me. That's spontaneity and that's part of being a child of God and that's what God wants his church to be and that's what God wants his people to be. Not just the pastor, not just the deacons, not just a Sunday school teacher, not just a youth director, us as believers in Amen. the Lord. Amen. When we came out of Egypt, God had given us a promise that we were going to take the land. And this, the, the, the spies came back and gave a bad report. And we wandered in the wilderness 40 years out because of disobedience. But I'm going to tell you something. We had a promise, but there's a battle during the promise. Yeah. You have to fight for the land sometimes. Hallelujah. And you have to fight for your faith sometimes. And that's why I think the Lord gave us that word that worship and prayer and the word of God are the are, are the what does that are the guardrails of our journey. <laughs> There's cliffs on both yeah. sides. These are the guardrails of our life. This word of God is a guardrail for our life. If we neglect it, I'm gonna tell you something. It'll show up. Yes. The flesh, the flesh, my goodness, we're flesh. Yeah, come on. Yes. We are flesh. Yeah. Tempted. I told the guys in the prison, none of you guys didn't have any more desires than I do. I'm a single man now. I had a 
perfect marriage. I'm pure in my life and in my heart. I'm not sensuous. I'm not into pornography. I'm not into any of these, but I still have desires that God put within the male factor of this world and it's a flesh and it's a spirit and I'm going to walk in the spirit therefore I will not fulfill the law of the flesh. Come on y'all. That's what we're talking about. Love God with all your heart. He don't want just a piece of it. Now let me ask you something. I know you two are married because y'all cuddle up together. Thank you for playing you. I like your playing. I used to play rock and roll music. I was when I married my wife. I was playing rock and roll music in the uh, at the Air Force Base, and I was playing. I was singing Ray Charles, and I was doing rhythm. You know, hey, hey, tell me what I say. Tell me what I say. You know? Yeah, I'm 20 years old. She's a dog. I got pictures of them. That's my screensaver is our wedding picture. You know, and I'll tell you what. She had a red skirt and a white blouse. And I was saying, see the lady with the red dress on. And we got married just a few weeks later, never met in our life. We only knew each other for just a couple of months. But you know what? God gave us 61 years. And I'm going to tell you something. When she got mine, she got my heart. And, and I, I just tell you that, that you know, but I'm going to ask you something. If he said to you tonight, well, baby, I'm 50% in and 50% out. You look at him, probably slap him naked and hide his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. Or she said that. She came home and said, hey, you know, this is a struggle. You know, life is so hard. We got these kids and God doing it anyway. I, you know, don't know how this is going to happen. Don't know how that's going to happen. You know, I'm tired of this and, and, and I just need a break. You know, I'm going to go off somewhere and stay for about a month. You go ahead and handle all this stuff. You say, oh my word, I'm about to die. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> There's no percentages right. in marriage. <laughs> And husbands and wives, you are the most powerful tool God has on this earth right. to take this world yes. back to Hallelujah. Jesus that there is in existence. Don't look for the church to do it. You are the church. Amen. And the church of the firstborn is not going to be destroyed or diminished. You will see people going astray Get your eyes off of them. Look within your own heart. Are you 100% for God? Praise God? Love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, secondly, love your family. Yes. On our tombstone at National Cemetery, where my wife is buried, and I'll be buried on top, I throw her eyes on top of things. <laughs> I laugh and cry at the same time. That's truth, you know. They'll bury me on top, you know. I told her I'll get to go first. <laughs> she me, you know. Yeah. But I said, honey, I'm going to make sure everything's good on the way up, you know. <laughs> but on our tombstone is they love God and they love family. And they loved others. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you. Husbands, love your wife as Jesus died and gave himself for us. We are to do for our wives. She owns the house. You own the payments. <laughs> Come on, brother. I can meddle if I want to. I just got a few minutes more. Yes, sir. I'm going back to Alton, Texas. <laughs> Men, it's our job Amen. to support the woman and the family. It's mama's job 
to bring the children into the kingdom of God. What we have today is fatherless society and shepherdless churches. We have people in the ministry, but the ministry is not in them. Oh, help us, Lord. That's good. And Ezekiel said that God is going to judge that in these days, and he's going to be the shepherd himself. Mm. And I'm telling you, I want him to use me. Thank you, Lord. No matter what, I want him to use me. Here am I. Sometimes I'm walking in the mornings, I'm going five miles to ten miles every morning, running and praying and running and praying. I don't really run, I kind of shuffle. But anyway, I keep going and, 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 and everything, and I'm praying, I'm running. I said, Lord, this is Ronald W. Aronson, 1025 Stephen Wood Lane, Allen, Texas. Here I am right now with you. Would you please help me? <laughs> I mean, I address him who I am. See, I'm going to be so close to God when he moves, he stumbles over me. <laughs> I do. Amen. Come on. Yes. Love your families. Wives, honor your husband. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I couldn't have asked for a more dedicated, consecrated, loyal partner for my life. I was raised in orphanages. My father was in prison all my life. And I suffered all the abuses of orphanages and all the stuff and the horrible beatings with horse whips and everything else. And I cried to God and I asked God, please give me somebody to love me. Please, please, please. From the time I was a little child, I got pictures of my phone of a farmer, a hog farmer, and I'm a little boy, about three years old, standing next to a buggy with a baby in it, and he could have adopted me, but nobody would let him. And so I suffered on and on and on, from three years old to fourth grade. And after fourth grade, a stepfather was more abusive than the orphanages. But God gave me somebody. I would cry and I would ask God, it's okay if I share just a little bit, brother. Someone? Please. From the time I was a little boy, I asked God to give me somebody to love me. I prayed. I was a Jewish boy. I grew up in the synagogue. Grew up in a Jewish community. Went to synagogue sometimes with Papa and so on. You know, my grandfather. My grandfather was an Orthodox rabbi who got saved and kicked out of the, the synagogue and started a, ten man, a minion of 10 people in his own home. My grandmother, Aronson, divorced him at 92 years in, in Woodland Hills, California. She was listening to my testimony on a cassette tape at 92 and gave her life to Jesus. But I always would pray. I never got an answer, man. I would pray to God. Please help me. And for years, from the time I was three years old till I was a 14, I was in fourth grade, I never heard from God. I never heard from God. I kept crying and begging him, please help me. I'd go by an oak tree like Abraham. I never worshipped the oak tree. I just knew that there was somebody that did something and made the oaks. And I'd look at the stars at night. I'd lay out on the grass and cry with tears running down my face and say, God, you created the heavens. I, I had no relationship with God. He never answered. He just didn't answer. And one day I was at Bethel Baptist Church, Highland uh uh, Highland and Congress Street in Oshkosh, Wisconsin on the third row and there was a missionary from the foreign field and he talked about a God who not only hears prayers but he answers and I wanted to know about this one who answers because I wasn't getting any answers at all and I was crying and asking God and here I was about 13 years old and he talked about this and I ran forward and I jumped into this man and I hung on to him with hands deep and I wanted to know about a God who answered prayers and then I found Jesus who did answer prayers and I began to walk with him and I began to acknowledge him and I wasn't discipled, I was a mess I was still a mess and, and God saved me and so on, but I, I want to share that with you he's the Lord who answers prayers, Jesus will answer your prayer, when you come to him in faith and trust with your total heart, he will reveal himself to you, God is not willing that any should perish, yes. but that all should be saved, and he wanted this little Jewish boy saved, and God saved me Hallelujah. that day and I didn't get to grow up in the Jewish community, in the synagogues, and all these other kind of things, I'd rather have Jesus than anything and we did do some Jewish things, but we got assimilated into the church. But we need to love our families. Honor your husband. 
if a husband is not honorable, then he needs to get in the counseling with God. Yes. Because God demands us to be honorable Praise and God. to be holy. Praise God, God, men, we need to be pure. Thank you, Jesus. Help us. And we're in an unpure world. Yes. I mean, we can see television. You know this right here? Is a blessing or a curse? Yes. I can turn on my, on uh, uh, any of these things I got on my phone, whatever they call them, and I can punch that in, and all of a sudden there's a lewd picture on there, or there's this on there, and you know, I'm going around, you know, or I get off of there, get on Facebook, and I can't believe stuff that goes on Facebook, and I said I didn't need to put in for that stuff, and and it's all blatant, it's all coming at us all the time, coming at us. That's the devil. He's portrayed it. This can be a blessing or curse. Yes. I've also got. Uh, app one, uh, Air One on here. How many of you heard of Air One? The, the, don't you love it, man? It's a praise and worship. It's called Air One. It's a free app and it's uh, no commercials, man. It's just uh, Air One, you know. Uh, and I can understand the words of the songs on my on my truck. I'm traveling all the United States and I'm listening to Air One, you know. And just the music and praising God. I got a Bible app on here. I got I got the what do you call that thing? A YouTube. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, YouTube. And I got preachers on there. And then I got something else on here. It's called uh, One Place, where you can get all the preachers. You know, there's all kinds of preachers on One Place, and you get a half a sermon or a whole sermon or what? I, I mean, I'm getting, I'm I'm drinking this up here because you say I don't want to make a space or a place or a crack in my in my vulnerability so that. Uh, that, that the enemy can come in and destroy my witness. Because you see, I can be in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I can be right here in Patterson, uh, Louisiana, and nobody in Texas knows what I'm doing, and nobody knows that the things are along the highway, and nobody knows the gambling joints that I can go in and out of, or whatever these other things are along the side of the road. Nobody would know that, but God knew it. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you something, he's the one that I wanna please. He's the one that I wanna serve. He's the one that I wanna hear something. You know what I wanna hear God say? Well done, good and faithful servant. I do not want him to hear. I do not want to hear. I don't know you. I've never known you. Oh, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. Oh, Lord, we've done this. Oh, Lord, we've done that. I don't know you. Sorry. I don't know. I don't, man, that, that just sends chills oh, right down Jesus. my spine that I would even think about. I, I, I want to live my life as an example, but I want to live my life before him as to his pleasure. Hallelujah. I want to live according to his pleasure. We need to love God with all the heart. We need to love our family. And next, we need to love the body of Messiah. Folks, Yes. this is you. I want you to just look around the room. Just turn around and look. It's okay. Look at your neighbor. Look around. Thank the one that made the brownies. I got one free. I wish they had walnuts in them. Hey. But you couldn't put nuts in and put them in the prison. But thank you very much for the long, I mean, for the brownies. Uh, and I, I thank you on behalf of all those hundred and some uh, prisoners that got the brownies too. They yes. loved them. They hand clapped you. They said thank you and all kinds of stuff. So we bring in the brownie maker. You, you made the day. Hallelujah. So, but I, I just want you to look at each other because you see, I want you to look at each other when you come to, to, to services. I want you to look at each other when you're at Walmart. I want you to look at each other when you're at Kroger's because you're going to spend eternity with each yeah. other. Yeah. If you know the Lord. If you don't, you won't. And you need to admit it and quit it and come to faith in Him. Praise today. God. And you'll be in the kingdom and you'll be in the family. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't be a dysfunctional family. Mm. Be a forgiving family. That's right. Realizing that you're imperfect too. Come on, come on, come on. Realize that you've got problems in your life too. That's right. Realizing that, doggone it, that person ran and hit the side of my new truck, and I'm fired up. And I go home fired up. Or I come to church fired up, and somebody says something, I pop off, and I'm wounded somebody. I'm going to tell you something. You can say the right words at the wrong time. You can do even the right thing at the wrong time. We need to watch out for the body of Messiah. Praise God. We are warriors together. 
Yes. I'm special forces. I don't want anyone in that foxhole with me that isn't willing to die for me and me for him. That's crazy. I think that's the way the body of Messiah needs to treat each other. I'll die for you. I'll give my life for Praise you. God. I'll give you my house if you need my house. I had a, some from the prison ministry say, you know, Rabbi, I want to come to Alvin. I said, well, be sure and call me. I said, because I travel and I'm going to be gone. But I live in Alvin. I know right where it is. I said, well, here's my address. I gave it to the guys in the prison ministry. I said, now I'm going to tell you where the key is. All you got to do is let me know. I can disarm all the cameras and the, and the, the security. You just go on in, make yourself at home, make the bed before you leave, you know, and uh, stay there as long as you need to stay. I mean, there's people that have codes to my house that go, I'm not there. I might not, and, and I'll go back and, there, there'll be a, a note on there, love you, you know, and they're gone. I didn't ask for money. I didn't ask for nothing. And I mean, it, it, some of them don't support our ministry in Israel, and I don't care because of what? They're my brother. They're my sister. Praise God. Now, I don't own that house. Come on. That's not my house. Thank you, Jesus. It's a nice three-bedroom home. It's beautiful. It, I have made every month because I'm traveling all the time. But you know what? I'm not a trashy person. I don't know what the maids do because it looks just as good before they get there as it does when they leave. The only difference is the refrigerator. A single guy doesn't have a very full refrigerator. It's got cheese sticks, almond milk, and a little fruit in the freezer. And if somebody is so kind to give me a home-cooked meal, I'll split it up. <clears throat> if I can't freeze it, I'll eat what I want. <clears throat> Put it back in the refrigerator. About four or five days later, it's a scientific experiment. It's growing something. And so I have to get it down to Herbert. Herbert enjoys it very much. I clean everything up, put a note, and give the, the containers back to the people that brought me a meal. A single guys need a home-cooked meal. You understand that? How many single guys we got? We need a home-cooked meal. Amen? Come on, guys. You see that girl? You see that mama? You see that grandma? I'm telling you, Dolly and I are best friends for 83 years old, and I turned 82 May 23rd. I'm 82 years old, born May 23rd, 1941. I'm telling you, God's given me my health, then giving me my strength so that I can give myself to the body of Messiah throughout this nation and call you to a place back to God. That, you know, you can't go back to a place you've never been. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. you cannot go back to a place you've never been. And I want to invite you to come to a place you've never been if you've never accepted oh. the Lord. Or I want to invite you today to renew yourself in these things that God has spoken to you individually about and corporately as a church. I don't know anything about this church other than I know that God is in this place. I knew it through worship. I knew it when I got up this morning. I knew it when we prayed before I left. I knew it when we were in the prayer room. I knew it. Why? Because he sent me. And God doesn't send me to dead places. Unless he wants to do a resurrection. <laughs> And I've seen spiritual resurrections. I'm not I'm not I'm, 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 and I, the only gift I have is the gift of God and the Messiah of Yeshua. There's nothing good about me at all. It's all about Him. There's nothing good about me. My wife is alive. She could tell you He's not a perfect man, believe me. And she knew every bit of my weaknesses. And so I'm just telling you, but you need to love one another. If you have not forgiven each other, you need to do that today. Caution. Don't go to somebody who absolutely knows nothing about the situation and say, please forgive me. I've hated you for three weeks. <laughs> they don't even know that. Get it right with God. Now, if you've offended a brother or sister, then make it right. Make it right. Because I'm going to tell you something. It will hinder you for the harvest. Yes. And it may disqualify you for the harvest. And there's nothing more important that we have in the Messiah Yeshua than the harvest. Yes. We are harvesters. How many of you ever been on a, a combine? A corn combine. You ever seen corn? I never did. I got one. 
But I have my, my best friend's a farmer and a rancher down outside of Houston, down in Wharton, Texas. He's got hundreds of acres and he brought a cotton plant to my wife. My wife grew up in Drew, Mississippi, uh, Archie Manning area, and Drew, Mississippi, and her daddy was a sharecropper and she was a cotton, she picked cotton and she didn't want nothing to do with cotton. I said, let me get a picture of you in the cotton field. She said, you ain't gonna get no picture of me in those no things cotton field because she picked cotton as a kid because there was 11 kids in the family and the larger the family, the better the, you know, the market for jobs. Well, anyway, he brought her a big cotton plant, put it in a vase and brought it to her in the last weeks and months of her life. And she said, I love you guys so much, I'm gonna take you to heaven with me. <laughs> she knew she was going, but I got to ride on a combine picking corn. I've never done that. I worked farms in the north where they did the silage, you know, and they put them up in the silos and feed the cattle and, uh, you know, the milk cows and all that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what in the world is But I'm telling you, I got to ride a corn picker. I did 60 acres on a combine and the corn was coming up and the, the, and the corn cobs were going. Do you know there's almost a thousand kernels of corn on a cob? 800 and some average on a cop. I didn't know that. And I'm going, and, and all of a sudden, this thing, this thing, this, this corn picker, this combine, it's putting out shelled corn in the back end. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. You believe that? The cobs were getting, they're getting spit out, and there's dust everywhere, and the wind's blowing. Corn's going out. I stepped outside, and I'm reaching down, and I got, I mean, corn. And all of a sudden, he takes this little thing and he moves it over and it's got some gears down here. And it's blowing that corn over into a, a buggy and the buggy's taking it to the 18-wheeler and the buggy blows the corn over into the 18-wheeler. Man, we were shucking. <laughs> corn. I've never been on a, 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 a cotton combine. Next week... When I get back from North Carolina, I got one day slot before I leave for Colorado, and this friend of mine owns this big place down there, got a cotton. My great grandson Joshua Levi Aronson was on a combine Friday picking cotton. You see, and I've been driving down here through this cane, uh, 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 what is it, sugar cane? I have never been down here in sugar cane. I'd like to find out when they're going to harvest it. I'd like to see how you guys harvest sugar cane. I'd really like to get in on that harvest. There's just something about harvest that just excites me. Can I just say something? Yes, sir. I've seen before where I'm not much of sugar cane. The no only reason I'm even saying this is because we had a prophet come through here a while back and he talked about a harvesting combine. And you're talking about all of this, right? He talked about something he gave a word to his church. But, and the only thing that I know to see is the sugar cane when they're harvesting it. They go through with their combines and it's got an arm and there's a truck that's on the side of it and it's just blowing the sugar cane up into the truck and filling them up all the way to the top and then the trucks are going and you're I just i'm amazed at this message that you're preaching anyway keep going sorry Isn't that amazing? I, that could help us. thank you man listen there's method in this madness i think because i i won't come see your your your, your sugar cane harvest I don't have to preach. I don't have to do anything. I'll stay with Dr. Mahoney up there in, in uh, New Iberia. If you've got a farm, you know farmers, you just look past to know. Maybe he can let me know. If it's on my calendar, I am driving from Houston, from Alvin, Texas. I don't call Houston my home, believe me. I, not my home. I believe when God flushes the proverbial commode, Houston's one of the ones that's going to go for it. There's uh, filth and dirt and corruption and everything in that place, along with some other places. But anyway, uh, I, I believe... I think that God's trying to get my attention about the harvest. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the last days, folks. Yes. Real quick, I want to give you an update for Israel. The menorah is made. Do you know what the menorah is? It's the lampstand. It's already made. The red heifer yep. is already there. Right. The utensils for temple have already been made. The priest's garments are already through. The DNAs have been issued for the Levitical priests and now they're perfecting a DNA for the Kohen, for the Aaronic, the Kohen, uh, that are going to be the ones who sacrifice. They've made almost everything ready for the temple. 
but there's no temple. But everything is pointing. Even the rabbis, the orthodox rabbis, the head rabbis, the chief rabbis are going to the wall praying that Messiah will come. Please send Messiah. And some of them are having visions and some of them are being visited by the Holy Spirit and some of them are having an experience of an angel saying the Messiah has come and they're getting born again. Right. I don't understand all of the things that's going on, but it's lining up, church. It's lining up. And I'm going to tell you something. The last revival on this earth is Israel is going to be saved. Yes. It's going to be saved. The church didn't replace it. We do not replace yes, the church. Right. I'm telling you right now, Jewish people are coming to faith by the hundreds. Young oh, people, goodness. the Israeli army, some of my friends' sons, the Israeli <laughs> army, special forces, they got a banner out there, and all these soldiers are behind this banner, and they got this huge banner out there saying, Yeshua is the Messiah. And they got it on the back of their army trucks, and they're getting baptized in the Jordan River. Hundreds of young people are being saved in the midst of so much turmoil and corrupt government. Israel has one of the most corrupt governments in the world right now. It's run by the Orthodox, the ultra-Orthodox. The scribes and the Pharisees are at it again. Yes. And Messianic Jews are being persecuted in prison. Evan Levine, who did a, 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 a dental clinic in, in, in uh, Jerusalem and one in Haifa, is wanted for felony witnessing to the Holocaust survivors with about seven years in prison. He had to leave Israel with his family. It's real. We're coming to the time of the return of the Messiah and what kind of people should we be? Mm. We're living in the days of all that's being fulfilled, y'all. There, there's, there's not much that can happen anymore, but the eastern sky is split wide open and the Messiah to come. Yes. Will the temple be rebuilt before he comes? I don't know. I really don't know. I've heard every kind of message there is to mention. Jesus can't come back today because this hadn't happened. I've got news for you. When Father says, Son, rise, it's time to go. He's coming. Somebody says, well, that's going to be Rosh Hashanah. It will. Whether it's in April, June, May, January, or on Rosh Hashanah this fall. It doesn't matter the day, but when he comes, the trumpet's going to sound. Yes. Are you ready? Are you willing to be in the harvest? I think that's what I really came to ask you. And what you're talking about, the harvester, past, Pastor, and, and what this man came through and said, you need to take this weighty church. Yes. Because God gave me this message for you. Are you going to be qualified for the harvest? Listen to me. This is the voice of the Lord, and I never say that. Unless it is, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going throughout the earth looking for a place to come down. And He's looking for a place to put His finger and touch that oil and bring a fire oh, up hallelujah. in that place. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is looking for a people that He can trust and that He will trust with His Holy Spirit. Not to abuse it, not to misuse it, not for their own sakes not for anything else other than to bring glory to the king and to bring value for Father God. I'm going to tell you right now, there's so many false prophets in the world today and many of them are Jewish. They're on network televisions and they're telling people stuff and it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Jesus came down and had bacon and eggs with me at the foot of my bed was one of them I heard. Another one said, Jesus told me that the president is going to be elected. Another one said this and another one said that. And people are being drove to these people that are false prophets. And Yeshua warned us that deception would come. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Listen to me. The only time Jesus ever got off the throne and stood was at Stephen stoning. Yes. There's not another historical proof, biblically or any other way, that Jesus appeared to this. An angel of the Lord? Yes, possibly. All these things. But listen to me. 
Jesus will not get off that throne until all of his enemies are under his footstool. Yes. And Father God said, son, it's time. Go get yes. the harvest. Bring them home. Yes. I'm telling you, do not listen to this garbage. Yes. Yes. Don't send your money. Support your community. Yes. Get involved. Oh, sweet. Seek out youth to come to faith. Yes. Begin to get your 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 eyes checked and your spiritual eyes yes. and, and, and reach out to hungry. Help the poor. Help the poor. Help the widows. Help the orphans in your community yes. and in Israel. And it says, Bless are those who bless Israel, for I will bless those who bless them. Yeah. And I'm just giving you that invitation. You don't have support of yet, but you've got to get involved with the nation of Israel somehow. I'm telling you, it will bless you like you would not believe. I will bless those. Father, thank you for this time. I'm through. I just want you, the Lord, do whatever you want to do.